person under the sound of my voice right now, hear our prayers, we pray. And God, right now, we believe you for victory. We believe you for deliverance. We believe you right now, God. God, we thank you that you're taking care of us. And you will never leave us nor forsake us. And God, today will be a beginning of a brand new life. A new trust, oh God. New life, new joy, new happiness, God. In the name of Jesus. God, we trust you for it. We believe you for it. We count it done right now. We thank you for restoration in Jesus' name. You're doing it right now, God. Thank you for it, God. We love you right now. Thank you for this peace. Hear our prayers, we pray. In Jesus' name. And the redeemed of the Lord said, amen. Say amen again, you all. Love on somebody. Love on somebody. Love on somebody. Glory to God. He's a good God. So good. so glad, grateful every year you afford us to celebrate our covenant one with another and we're so very thankful for that. This begins the pastor's vacation and so a part of that celebration is to have someone else to deliver the word of God so that I can receive as well. We're so very grateful for Pastor Eric Sanders. He has been a blessing to this faith community, and he's under covenant with us during this season of his life, and we're thankful for that. I'm always trusting that God's will is the greater will, and when others could not come, to God, you give us the person who you want us to want to deliver the word, and God said, Pastor Eric Sanders. I'm grateful for him and his witness, his ministry, for his energy. Uh, he has a lot of energy, a lot of energy. And you want to keep folk, you know, as you get older and more mature, you want to get some younger folk around you. Amen. 
So everybody won't be looking like you, sounding like you, you know, or sit still like you. You're going to have to have somebody, you know. And uh, so I'm grateful, and we're grateful. He doesn't need an introduction. We want him to deliver this 21st pastoral anniversary according to the word that God has given to him. Amen. Amen. Metropolitan, after our psalmist will come back and she will come and deliver. Is, she, is that right? No, that's it. Oh, that's good. So stay right there. I love, no, no, no stay right there. Because he can handle from there. Stay right there. In fact, go right back into it right now. The next speaking voice we hear right now, and we already know there is a word, but we want to ask Pastor Sanders as if he just flew in. And he did just fly in you know, early this morning from Las Vegas. <laughs> but there's a word from the Lord, amen? And we want to make sure that there is a metropolitan. What is our question to Pastor Eric Sanders? worship him for a few moments. Can you lift your voice and sing that right there? I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. And I'm going to worship. Just want to tell you that I love you so wave your hands in this place and tell them I just want to tell you that I love you so want to tell you that I love you. You mean so much to me, Lord. Right there. Oh, Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you more than anything. Come on, just whisper those words to him. Lord, I love you. Expecting something from him. Say, I love you, Lord, I love you more than yes. Lord, I love you, Lord, I love you more than anything. God, we thank you today. We honor you because you are God. Truly today, Lord, we say that we love you more than anything. We love you more than anything that we have, more than anything that we could ever have. We love you, God, more than the air that we breathe. You're more than life to us, and we appreciate you. We honor you for your word. We thank you, Lord, that your word will go forth and have free course in this place. I ask, oh God, that you would anoint me in the name of Jesus, that you would hide me behind your cross, and when the people see me, allow them to see you. I ask that you would perform the miraculous in this place, in the name of Jesus. Let a yoke be destroyed off of someone's life. Hallelujah. And we bless you for it. We thank you for this servant, this man of God, this pastor that you've anointed for such a time as this. 
and our leader, O oh God, and our shepherd. And we ask today that you would encourage his heart. Bless the man of God. Let the word find him where he is today. In the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for the supernatural taking place on his behalf. Somebody that loved the man of God, come on and shout out. Come on and praise God for the supernatural taking place on his behalf. Hallelujah. We thank you in advance, oh God, for signs, wonders, and miracles. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the people of God say amen. amen. Say amen again. Amen. Clap your hands and bless the Lord, everybody. Come on and bless him. Hallelujah. We truly honor the Lord for being here today and uh, his presence. We thank him for salvation. We thank him for the Holy Ghost. Somebody praise him with me today. Hallelujah. I want you to help me to celebrate our pastor, Reverend Leon Perry III. Come on, with a good shout and a good clap. I know you did it already, but come on, let's love on him all day. Come on, Metropolitan, stand to your feet, and let's give it up for the man of God who feeds us every week. Come on. You can do better than that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you, Pastor. I honor you today uh, for 21 years of being the senior leader in this place and for 30 years of serving in this house. You all know that's a great accomplishment. People don't stay on a job two years nowadays. Come on, talk back to me in here. Y'all know y'all skip a job, get mad with the supervisor, leave and go to another job. Come on, but no matter how mad he was with you, he came right back and preached from this pulpit. I believe we should praise God for that in this place. Amen. And we thank God for our assistant pastor, Reverend Person, today. Hallelujah. Bless you, Reverend. And for all of the people of God, all of the ministers, we thank God for you. I thank God my church mother from Locos is here today. Mother Childs, wave your hand. I love you so much. I know I'm going to have to work, work good today with her being in the house. I love you. And I want to say to Metropolitan, before we go any further, that I want to tell you all, good suit on. I was trying to really be distinguished today. But I want to say thank you to this church. I shared with Pastor a couple of weeks ago that the Lord is doing something so special for me in this church. And I know I may get on y'all nerves sometimes because I be loud. <laughs> and I'm always, um, and I do have a lot of energy. And sometimes I sing songs that you probably don't know. Of, but I want to say thank you because you all have loved me back to life. never know what people are going through. And you never know why people are in your midst. But a hug and a smile and love goes a long way. And there is an overwhelming sense of love that I have been shown in this church. And I am so grateful to God and to all of you. Give yourselves a hand today. I'm honored to be here. Thank Pastor for giving me this opportunity. Uh, I'll talk about Pastor a little bit more in just a few moments, but let's get to the Word of God because I've got a short amount of time to do a little bit. So I ain't gonna, well, I am going to tell all of you, told me, make sure I remember the time. <laughs> Amen. John 6. Verses 16 and 21, John 6, verse 16. 
verses 16 through 21. The Bible says, Speak, Lord. The word of God reads as thus it says, And when even was now come, his disciples went down unto the sea. They entered into a ship and went over the sea toward Capernaum. And it was now dark. Jesus, so Jesus, was not come unto them. And the sea arose by reason of a great wind that blew. So when they had rowed above five and twenty or thirty furlongs, they see Jesus walking on the sea, drawing nigh unto the ship, and they were afraid. And he saith unto them, It is I, be not afraid. Verse 21, Then they willingly received him into the ship, and immediately, shout immediately. I said, shout immediately. Amen. Immediately, the ship was at the land whither they went. In just a moment's time, God blessed them to get where they intended to go. If you would rehearse with me today, my subject, an opportune time. An opportune time. This word today, of course, is for our leader, but God is going to bless us to eavesdrop on his blessing. Amen. And he shared with us last week that this was not just his anniversary, but our anniversary. And so the Lord hopefully will speak to us uh, today and be mindful of all of us. This word is for those of you who feel as if time may possibly be working against you, like you're getting too old, like everyone may be perhaps passing you by, perhaps maybe even that you feel you've spent the last five or ten or of your life watching the clock or wasting time. Well, God told me to tell you that this very moment, this very hour, this second that we're sitting in is an opportune time for you. Opportune, what does the word mean, Pastor? It means well chosen. It means particularly favorable. Opportune time is your Kairos time. Bible speaks about two different types of time, one being chronos and the second being kairos. Chronos refers to chronological time or sequential time. Chronos is quantitative. It means 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 7.30 p.m., 15 minutes. But the apostle Paul spoke to us often of a different kind of time called kairos. While chronos is quantitative, kairos is qualitative. Different from chronos, kairos signifies, watch this believers, it signifies an in-between time. It signifies a moment of indeterminate time in which something special happens. Why don't you look at a neighbor on your left and right and tell them today something special is getting ready to happen for you. Oh, uh, they didn't receive it, so turn around and tell somebody behind you, say, something special is getting ready to happen for you. An unspecified time. You are getting ready, people of God, to walk into an unspecified time. You see, when we talk about an opportune time, we talk about the moment, watch this, when Jesus steps into our situation. Hallelujah. We talk about the moment when Jesus, glory to God, when he gets into the ship with us. And if you know anything about the presence of Jesus, when the presence of Jesus is there, he causes demons to tremble. Wave your hands if you know what I'm talking about. His very presence demands a shift. When Jesus comes, his presence brings with it the anointing of acceleration. Glory to God. I'll share a story with you. There was a moment when my baby, y'all know Jada, the little girl that's always running around with me. She had to have surgery a few years ago, and I was waiting in the waiting room, and I was sitting there by myself for just a moment, and I was watching the clock on the wall, and the clock, I, I'm telling you this happened to me, and the clock on the wall uh, was one of those clocks like they got upstairs, was standing uh, at its appropriate time, and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, the Lord allowed me to witness this. The clock just began to go like this. And it began, nobody was messing with it, but the clock began to advance itself. 
walk with me for a moment. I won't be long. And, and so and so I was watching it, and I had to pull out my phone and record it because I said, nobody's going to believe that this happened that this clock on the wall, which normally just uh, goes in time as it's already set, began to literally advance itself to the correct time. Glory be to God. And God began to speak to me while I sat in that room. And he said, this is what's getting ready to happen in your very life. The stuff that the enemy told you would take you 30 and 40 years to accomplish, God said, you're getting ready to have it happen in just one year. If I can prophesy over our church today, God said that things that would have taken us five years to accomplish, we're getting ready to do it in a few months. Come on, Metropolitan, and praise right there. He said, I'm giving you the anointing of acceleration. The Bible says that in the evening, the disciples entered into that ship and set sail on the sea. Nightfall was come, but Jesus hadn't joined them yet. And in the beginning of chapter 6, they were together with Jesus. And just before we pick up the text, the Bible tells us that Jesus departed himself and went into another location. And I'm telling you this because I want it to be clear to you that things were already a little bit unsettling. Uh, my great aunt used to say she was uneasy, you know, and so and so yeah, them being used to having Jesus with them and now Jesus being gone, it was already a little bit uncomfortable. Say amen if you know what I'm talking about. And, and usually Jesus is with them, but now he's withdrawn himself. But listen, believers, he has withdrawn himself for a divine purpose. Isn't it interesting to see that in spite of the circumstances, the disciples still yet set sail to their location and steered that ship toward Capernaum. It is important, my brothers and sisters, that, watch this, that we never grow too attached to our current circumstance. It is important, Pastor, that we never grow too accustomed to our usual environment. I wish you would work with me in here. It is important that we don't, uh, we harm ourselves when we believe that things are supposed to operate the same way that they're operating because they've always worked that way. I thought the word of God says that he will do a new thing and that now it shall spring forth. Is there anybody in this room that's looking for God to do a new thing in your life? I'm tired of the old blessing. I'm tired of the same old word. I'm tired of the same old miracle. I'm tired of the same old testimony. But God, give me a new testimony. All believers will be confronted with the temptation to become complacent in their environment. And that's some of our problem today. We think that it is God who has us in this holding pattern, but the Lord is saying all along, the minute that you make up in your mind that you are sick and tired of your current situation, he says, that's when I'll change things for you. You've got to get an unction in your Holy Ghost. You've got to get something in your belly that says, I will not stay down any longer. I will not stay in this predicament any longer. Come on, church. You've been on that job for 15 years, and they're still paying you the same $2 an hour. The devil is a liar. You've been driving that hoopty for the last 10 years. It messed you up and get you to church late all the time. Get yourself something new. Come on, church. Wave your hand at your neighbor. See, I know he's talking, right? The minute you make up in your mind that you are going to take God at his word and that you are going to believe him to do the exceeding and the abundantly above all that you can ask or think, he says today that's when the miraculous will take place in your life. I'm almost finished. Look at somebody and tell them if you want your moment, you've got to get up. And make a move. Come on, church. If you want your moment, you got to get up. And you got to make a move. You got to keep moving even when it seems like Jesus is not with you. 
Notice that I said it seems like Jesus is not with you. Because how many of you know, even when you don't see him, he's still there. He said in his word that he would never leave us nor forsake us, but that he would be with us always, even until the ends of the earth. For what reason did Jesus depart from the disciples? Some would say the answer is simple to escape the Jews trying to make him king. But beloved, I submit to you today, it was much deeper than that. If it was only that Jesus could have taken the disciples with him, if he just wanted to get away, he could have told the disciples, y'all come steal away with me. But notice, Jesus went away and left the disciples there. I believe God allowed the disciples to come into this time in order to set the stage for the miracle that was to come. You see, the disciples knew who their leader was. I can hear them telling one another, don't worry about it. Jesus will show up. The disciples understood that no matter what it looked like, Jesus would not forsake them. But then right in the middle of their journey, things begin to get worse and a storm overtakes the sea. Have you ever been going through and you feel like to yourself, it can't get no worse than this? Surely I can't get no sicker than this. I can't feel no worse than this. I can't have no more callers, no collection calls more than this. And then something happened that make it even a little bit worse. This is what was happening to the disciples. They're already on the sea without Jesus. It's already dark and now here comes a storm. I would think at this point they start to point fingers at one another, saying things like, we probably going to die out here. Saying stuff like, I told you we should have stayed on the shore. Come on, church. You know when things get bad, people start pointing fingers. You know how spouses are. You get mad. You know, you make the wrong decision. You tell your husband, you the one said do it. Come on. Wife, look back and say, no, you said do it. This is what was going on. There was a little friction in the ship because now we're being rocked by the storm, and it seems like we'll never make it to our destination. We all, like the disciples, have a destination, a dream, a vision, or an objective in mind that we feel like we're not getting to it fast enough. We don't feel like we're making the progress that we should have made. Say amen, church. Glory to God. It feels like it's been held up from us, like the money is held up, like there's a block in the spirit. Darkness is set in and the path seems unclear and confusing. God seems distant. It's a painful thing when God seems distant from you. It's a painful thing. You know how it is. Sometimes you come to church, and as soon as you hit the door, you feel the glory. Yes, hallelujah, I can make it. But there are times when you're going through so bad, you come in and you're like, I don't feel like praising. If they tell me to lift my hands one more time, if they tell me to praise God one more time, I'm going to scream because it don't feel like God is listening. But I want to tell you that in those seasons that it feel like God is not listening, that's your opportune time and your opportune moment. Say amen, church. The word of God tells us that he is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart and save if such as be of a contrite spirit. What are you saying, pastor? I'm saying if you're going through right now, you're in the right place at the right time. Yeah, what do we do, man of God? Like the disciples who traveled four miles to the middle of the lake, we've gone too far to turn around now. Oh, y'all ain't hollering back at me in here. We don't come too far to turn around now, man of God. We can't go back nowhere. What I'm going to go back to? Come on, church. I'm already out here now. I got to keep on going forward. Say amen. We can't turn around now. We've got to keep going. And just like the disciples, I know the spirit of fear is trying to kick into your life and tell you that those are uncharted waters or uncharted territories or what's going to happen if you fail. But you got to tell the devil he's a liar and tell him God have not given me the spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Tell your neighbor, I got a sound mind today. You can't give up now. Every now and again, I promise I'm almost done. I got about six minutes left. Every now and again, when you're on the freeway, you feel like, glory to God, you feel like traffic is going too slow. Help me, Holy Ghost. And if you're like me, you become discontented when somebody is in front of you just going, not even the speed limit. I got a little bad case of road rage. I'll be honest and stay saved this morning. You know, you know, and then you become frustrated. 
Are you hearing me today? And, and, and it makes you angry and you, you want to go off on the car in front of you. What were they doing? Why were they going so slow? Ain't even nothing in the road. Ain't nothing happening up ahead. What's going on with this car in front of me? And I need you to understand tonight that although we've been taught to believe that frustration is of the devil, if I could just take you somewhere for a moment and tell you that